Narrative Coherence, Building a Foundation for Empathy by Dr. Gina Wong. The last thing I want to share is, you know, a little bit more about attachment and reflective practice and what we can do to understand our own attachment systems better. And to know, you know, I found it very useful to know that even though we may not have grown up with secure attachments with our parents and caregivers, there's something called earned attachment. And earned attachment is gained security through reparative relationships in adulthood. And in fact, um, we may not have a secure relationship with our caregivers. But if we had one individual growing up, a coach, um, a teacher, someone in our life who was an adult, who we felt safe with, it allows us to grow with the feeling of what it's like. And many of us don't have that. And there's the ability through earned security. Um, but it's, you know, this is the kind of therapist development work that is truly um, difficult because it's our own inner work. It's our own recognition. It's, wait a minute, where am I at? How can I work on improving this? How am I in sitting, sitting in my own space of acting out within? Am I able to have compassion for myself when I'm not feeling, when I'm feeling all out of sorts? Because in our relationship with ourself, when we can show up that way within, and not always, of course, you know, I'm just, I'm saying that that ability to means that when our clients are showing up with big emotions and maybe even directed at us, that we can sit with it and hold it and not try to fix it or make it go away, but just say, it's really hard what you're feeling right now. That's really tough. Yeah. Um, so in, in this way of our own self-growth and it's difficult and it's lifelong is so much part of being a, a therapist and a counselor. So one of the things that we talk about in attachment research and literature is the ability to tell a coherent narrative of our upbringing. And so there are these attachment um, assessment strategies, <clears throat> very expensive training and very, you know, um, quite in depth. So the adult attachment interview, the AAI, or the PDI, the parent development interview. These are question interview answer protocols to assess uh, an individual's attachment. And so I want to share with you some of the ideas in there without, you know, don't need the full training. But what's interesting is they talk about our ability to have a coherent narrative of our upbringing, um, how we make sense of our upbringing, how that story holds together, even if there's trauma. Perhaps there was someone who helped us, um, like I was saying earlier. Are there holes in the story, gaps? some memories that aren't there. Sometimes that's evidence of perhaps some trauma, perhaps some dissociating, um, perhaps we have experienced neglect. No one was there to mirror our emotions or validate them. And so we don't, we're not really present <clears throat> and have consolidated some memories in there. Do we jump all over the place in time? Um, how do we tell that story? How does someone listening to that story feel? Do they feel all over the place, disconnected, confused? <clears throat> or do they feel connected to us when we're telling the story? Now I'm saying this and the goal <clears throat> isn't to then, okay, let me see how I tell my story. It's recognizing, okay, I don't have great memories of when I was six or whatever that might be, and wondering about that, not judging, not getting concerned about it, because, you know, this is why therapists are in therapy. 
um, we do need the work ourselves. And I, you know, I can tell you that myself. Um, and it's the beauty of being human. So this isn't about, okay, you've got to go make sure you've got a coherent narrative. It's about, okay, recognizing that when we ask this of our clients, tell us about your growing up experiences. What was that like? And when we listen and hear and how they tell it, it helps us to know more about their attachment, more about what it was like growing up, um, asking them about their early attachment figures and how they felt with, within that relationship. So assessing the quality of the attachment with caregivers, um, even asking, you know, when I'm talking about this, do you, can you see yourself as a little person? How old are you in that? What are you wearing? What's on your mind? How are you in that moment feeling about your main caregiver right then and there? So to ask questions in a deliberate way to almost bring them to their child state to get a sense of what they're thinking, what they're feeling. And of course, that can only be done when they feel safe with us. And turning that inward and asking us questions. When we think about ourselves as a child, is there a certain age that we're at? What are we doing? What is that memory? How are we feeling about ourselves? How are we feeling about being able to be upset with the caregiver? How do we know we're loved? So those kinds of questions um, posed to our clients and understanding and listening to what they have to say has a lot of information and insight into it. And when we pose those questions and ideas to ourselves and we think through or we journal and we reflect, lets us know where we're at and with compassion to where maybe we want to do some work or the strengths within the relationships that we had early on. So it's all learning, it's all growth um, and reflective practice is so key to that. So hopefully this has been helpful to you.